Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to BMMP4553 Ship Metal Technology which is our lecture 3 and I'll be talking about ship metal process, ship metal forming process which is rolling. And I have today about 30 slides to share with you and uh, the first objective for today is introduction to this forming and shaping process for metal specifically the principles uh, of rolling process and also what are the parameters involved in rolling process so the rolling of metals okay this is a diagram of how a process of rolling is being done to a state of metal so rolling is defined as the process of reducing the thickness okay from a long workpiece by compressive forces applied through a set of rolls okay and rolling accounts for about 90 percent of all metals produced in by metal working process which is uh they come from uh, casting okay the, the initial uh, metal uh, is uh, is from uh, that came out from casting and then uh, is produced to different shapes of metal different sizes okay and most of it 90% of it are through rolling process and the basic operation is flat rolling where the rolled products are flat plate and sheet and as you recall uh, we've already established the definition of sheet is that a metal which is uh, more than 0 0.4 millimeters and less than 6 millimeters and more than 6 millimeters we call it as a plate so this is an ex uh, what I did this uh, figure shows the schematic outline of various uh, uh, flat and shape rolling processes we have um, over here okay and next is we from the billet we produce smaller rods that in turn we can use it to produce a wire or wire products or from billet we can use to make round tubes to produce and finally seamless uh, pipes uh, for bloom the category is uh, the shape of the of a uh, bloom product is much bigger or larger than cross section has has a larger cross section than billet and we, from it we can produce structural shapes like i beam or for uh, for uh, rails for train or for monorails and next is talking about the rolls okay the rotating rolls will perform two main functions one is to pull the work into the gap between them by the friction between the work part and the rolls and uh, pull the work into the gap between them by friction between the work part and the rolls next is simultaneously squeezing the work to produce to reduce the cross-section okay so the types of rolling by geometry of work we have flat rolling which is used to reduce thickness of a rectangular cross-section next shape rolling which from a square cross-section from us from the slab for example or from the bloom okay and then we uh, to form uh, into shapes such as an i-beam uh, by temperature of work, we have hot rolling, which is we already talked about uh, hot, uh, the same as hot, uh, hot working, which is we at an elevated tem temperature, uh, and then this is most common. Uh, we, we apply this hot rolling because this is, it has a large, a lot of a large amount of deformation required. So if we at a higher elevated temperature, the the force to uh, to apply to uh, to deform the metal will be much lower because of it's uh, more malleable next is cold rolling which is we producing the finished sheet and plate uh, at the final dimension okay and we use cold rolling to have a, a better surface finish and 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 have a, a, a better dimensional control so rolling is first carried out at elevated temperature as i mentioned just now when we carry out at elevated temperature we have the the, sh the metal is much more easy to deform okay it had it doesn't require uh, to a higher force to uh, to deform uh, plastically to a to the uh, to the that required dimension and during this phase the coarse grain uh, brittle and porous structure of the customer is broken down into a rod structure uh, having a finer grain size with enhanced properties and then afterwards we perform cold rolling which is carried out at room temperature 
Uh, this is an, uh, how showing how the grain structure during hot rolling. Okay, uh, we have the changes in the grain structure of cast or of large grain rod metals during hot rolling, and the hot rolling is an effective way to reduce the grain size of the metals to improve the strength and ductility. And cast structure of ingots or continuous, uh, continuous casting are converted to a rod structure by hot working, meaning initially we have a, a larger uh, ununiform uh, grain of the ingot coming from uh, casting okay afterwards okay the from hot rolling okay we have uh, a rod product with larger grains okay a much larger grains here and then uh, afterwards after the hot rolling the the grains become okay uh, uh, following the direction of the of the of the rolling uh, rolling direction which is this direction uh, we have uh, the grains are more deformed into elongated shape and then afterwards uh, as it cools down from the hot rolling new grains are forming and the new grains are growing uh, here and also here from the larger grains and then finally we have uh, after the as I said the cooling at the end of the rolling process we have a more recrystallization process coming on and then we have a much uh, smaller grain size as the, as the initially from the larger grain initially and flat rolling is a strip of thickness of we call it as H0 enters the roll gap and we reduce to the thickness of HF returns the final thickness by a fair by a pair of rotating rolls and each roll is being powered through its own shaft by electric motors both uh, the, the the upper roll and the bottom roll and this is a schematic illustration of the flat rolling process. Okay, shows uh, if we remove the top, the top roll, this would be the bottom roll, and here will be the initial width, initial thickness. Uh, if we, um, if we have times it uh, with the with the length, we have the initial volume. Okay, which is this is will be the initial volume, and this is the workpiece. This will be the final volume okay and then this is will be the the uh, rolling phase the length of the of the roll this area which be the area that is being touched by the by the roll by the workpiece and b if we uh, showing the what are the frictional force okay being acting on the on the on the metal or the workpiece we have the initial volume and then initial and then final volume which is the workpiece and then will be this is will be the uh, the rolling uh, roller uh, volume and then alpha will be the contact angle r will be the the no slip point here this is the no slip point coming here and this will be the roll gap meaning this is this part the one that's being with the uh, is in contact with the with the workpiece and this is the how the friction force acting on the on the workpiece and this we call this area as the exit zone where the the workpiece is coming out of the roller okay and this is uh, finally how the uh, rolling force is work uh, working on acting on the uh, acting on the workpiece from the roller to the to the workpiece okay and the width of the strip usually increases okay during rolling okay the width of the strip normally increase because we because the volume would be the same okay so uh, the volume should should stay the same and the the width that the, the width would be larger when it comes out of the roller so what are the flat rolling process equations are involved the roll force is equals to force in newton equals to the length width and the yield average stress which is the roll strip contact length where l we find as the square root of r with the radius of the roller the initial thickness minus the final thickness okay and we w is the width of the strip y average is the average true stress okay not the engineering stress but the true stress and this calculation is for a frictionless situation in actual force may be accounted about 20 percent more okay due to the friction Okay, the, the, the roller have to uh, have to overcome the frictional force and then the power uh, to calculate the power for the two rows P in kilowatt equals to 2 pi 
force L would be the roll strip contact length N would be the the RPM or the revolution per minute of the roll divided by 60,000 okay which is the per minute okay so N is the RPM of the roll and torque is equal to F times A which is A is the length divided by 2 so this is an example calculation on the flat rolling process. So if we have a met, uh, uh, annealed copper metal, non-ferrous metal, okay, annealed copper strip with a 250 millimeter wide and 25 mm thickness, is rolled to a thickness of 20 millimeter, meaning that we begin from the begin from the um, Uh, from 25 millimeter thickness to a 25 20 mm thickness in one pass and the roll radius is 300 mm and the rolls rotate at 100 revolution per minute so how do we calculate the roll force and the power required in this operation okay so we know from the schematic just now alpha would be the contact angle this would be the alpha over 2 okay if we do a triangle uh, uh, during, during Pythagoras theorem and then this will uh, the thickness will be x over 2 okay and that will be the the that will be the the uh, the angle okay for this triangle h naught will be the initial thickness and hf will be the final thickness So the solution we have to count first we have to de uh, to determine the roll force we have to determine the roll strip contact length which is from the uh, equation we have here which is l equals to okay, l equals uh, square root of r times the fine the initial thickness minus the final thickness which is the uh, initial thickness minus the final thickness and we have here the the roll contact length is 38.7 millimeters and the average true stre stress for a nil copper is determined as follows first note that the absolute value of the true strain that the strip undergoes in the operation with the true strain is equals to ln divided uh, ln of 25 over 20 which is 0.223 and from here from the true strain that we find here Okay, true strain is 0.223 and uh, we go to the annealed copper and from here we find the true stress value which is about uh, 300 or no, 280 uh, megapascal around here about 280 megapascal so even to above the note copper has a true stress of about 80 megapascal in the unstrained condition okay and at true strain of the point the true stress is about 280 megapascal Thus, the average true stress is about 80 plus 280 divided by 2, which is the average true stress is about 180 megapascal. And we can now define the roll force by using the equation 1, okay, which is uh, uh, the roll contact length times width and the average uh, yield stress, average uh, true stress, which is 38.7 divided by 1000. Okay, which is millimeter 250 about 1000 millimeter times 180 megapascal and we have about 1.74 mega newton and the to total power is calculated from the third equation noting that n is 100 revolution per minute thus power is 2 pi force the uh, roll strip length n would be the revolution per minute divided by 60,000 which is from the value we put in we have the power of the two rows are 700, 705 kilowatt so the ship rolling operations in addition, in addition to flat rolling okay various shapes can be produced by ship rolling okay we can we can have a straight and long structural shapes such as solid bars with various cross sections uh, either in a square rectangle or in a circular shape and we have channels i beams railroad rails are rolled by passing the stock through a set of specially designed rolls okay for example uh, in shape rolling first we have from the blooming uh, coming from from casting 
then we roll to a shape of the blooming rose the second stage we have a uh, the edging rose which we make the thickness more we have the thickness smaller and we extend the edge of the of the blooming rose then stage three is that we rough the horizontal and vertical rows okay we have a much uh, we have two sides here uh, to control the, the 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 shape of the edge and then finally and then at stage four we have intermediate rows and vertical rows which we 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 make the the edge much uh, smaller okay with vertical rows and stage five we have edging rows okay to uh, to make a more refined edge on uh, at the edge of the the shape coming from the rows and finally at the sixth stage we have the finishing horizontal and vertical rows which uh, make the the actual dimensions and the finishing dimensions also to a much more uh, uniform uh, distribution shape and also more uh, a better surface finish ring rolling okay is a process of a thick ring expanded to a larger diameter with a re with a reduced cross section okay and the ring is placed between two rolls closer together one of which is driven and its thickness is reduced by bringing the rolls closer together as they rotate okay. and application we can have a ball or roller bearing racer steel tires for railroad wheels and rings for pipes pressure vessels and also rotating machinery the advantage is that we have material savings and ideal grain orientation and strengthening through cold working. So this is an example of the of uh, ring rolling, which we have two the main row which is the feed and the idler row which is idle and the the edging rolling to to have a better surface finish of the uh, and also to maintain the dim the the dimension of the edge of the of the because because as you know the the volume will still be the same so this ideally idle row would feed and and from this smaller dimension smaller diameter you can have a much larger diameter and this would be the the direction of the rotation okay and re-rolling is used to reduce the wall thickness okay at the expense of the diam the increase of the diameter of the ring okay? uh, the number one is will be the start and two will be the completion of the process and this is also another schema uh, showing another different view of the schematic of ring rolling which the main rolling here will be the, which is driven and rounding roll another type would make to ensure the shape concentricity is is uniform and the edging roll to ensure that the, the edge as the diameter is is being larger and the thickness of the of the ring is 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 decreasing, so we uh, we have a much uh, uh, a better surface finish of the of the edge okay, to work on. So this is the schematic of the ring rolling operation. Okay, the, as the thickness is reduced on this side, we see the diameter would be much larger. An example of cross sections that can be formed by ring rolling. This is an example of the different cross section okay, through ring rolling. Next is thread rolling. So it is a process in a cold forming process by which straight or tapered threads are formed on round rods by passing them between dies. And you actually had a chance to do this on your during your manufacturing pra practice uh, work through uh, lathe or turning. And the advantage of thread cutting as opposed to machining is that we have a higher production risk because uh, the machining can, can produce a larger uh, parts of the of the thread okay better material utilization and also stronger threads due to the work hard work hardening okay and also we have a better fatigue resistance due to compressive stresses introduced by rolling so this is an example of thread rolling which is the stationary die and the moving die will and the blank of, of which the material okay and then finally the stationary die goes through the moving die and we have the final uh, work piece will have the shape of the thread. Another uh, process is is uh, this would be the reciprocating flat die, which is meaning that the both are the of the of the dies are 
uh, are moving. Another one is the reciprocating uh, flat dice, which is uh, we have the wood rest and also two uh, the stationary cylindrical die and the moving cylindrical die with applying force here and the wood piece. Finally, the in the middle in between them we have the the wood piece. Okay. So and uh, this is the features of a machined or rolled thread. We have the minor diameter and also the major diameter, which is the larger part of the thread, and how shape of the machine or, or rolled thread and the diameter of the bar which is the the workpiece diameter and here we have the uh, thread of a uh, machine uh, we have when we have, we machined a uh, uh, workpiece into the thread this is the grain uh, shape okay and unlike unlike machining which cuts through the grains of the metal okay if rolling the 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 grain okay, is being forced to uh, according to the shape control of the of the thread which in turn will have a much uh, improved strength because of the cold working and a, a more uh, uh, the grain is following the the shape of the of the of the rolled thread as opposed to machining which we which we cut directly uh, uh, across the the grain uh, across the grain of the metal So what are defects that we can uh, that we can uh, expect from flat rolling? That okay, you can on it may not only degrade the surface appearance, but it may adversely affect the strength for mobility, for mobility and and etc. Because when casting when cast metal, okay, and initially it has it is at a higher strength because of its it, it is more brittle and, and a lot of uh, internal stress on the on the cast. And when we flat roll, we we, we but the, at the same time the cast product is it has a lower ductility, and when we go to flat rolling, the the initial strength will be will be reduced, but we improve on its ductility, and and also the formability, and some of the defects example defects in flat rolling we have if uh, at the roll direction we have a wavy shape okay wavy edges. Where the strip is thinner along its edges, okay, and then in center, that's the edges uh, elongate more than the center, okay, because of the rolling direction. So the edges might, might uh, elongate more compared to the center. Next, we have cracks, which is result of a poor material ductility at the roll temperature because of its, because when during cold uh, rolling, okay, then the material should be, we expect it to have a much higher ductility, but uh, because if it doesn't uh, doesn't achieve that, that the the percentage of ductility, okay, we can actually deform and also uh, uh, have, uh, we, and the, at the center of the material can crack due to uh, the 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 strength of the rolling it exceeds the uh, strength of the metal. Next, we can have edge cracks, which is poor quality of materials at the edges. Okay, could be from uh, uh, the edges there having uh, impurities or and then having uh, the uh, acting with as uh, the thrust concentration points so then we can have uh, edge cracks at the edge of the workpiece next uh, alligatoring meaning that uh, because of the where the non-uniform bulk preformation process or presence of defects in the original materials can make the 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 plate or the sheet separated okay having uh, opening up in the from in the middle, uh, then the, the crack propagates according to the uh, to uh, uh, along the 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 direction of the of and length of the of the work piece. So that is all I was talking about uh, discussing about the rolling process. And you have any questions? You can comment in the video, or you can text in uh, during our uh, MS Teams, our next MS Teams session, or you can just chat. In the, in, the, uh, in the lecture channel or you, uh, to discuss and we can uh, have uh, and then I will try to answer your, your, your questions okay, or your queries in our next session. So thank you very much for your attention and have a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 300, uh, square root of 300 over 20, uh, times 25 minus 20 which is 300 is the roll radius and 25 
MM Visde uh, 